My name is Ian Retallick and I'm from Specialist Retailers. And before we start, I just want to apologise if I sound a little bit rough. I'm just recovering from a cold, but hopefully that won't hinder the things that I want to share with you today. So last time we spoke, we talked about the importance of clearly identifying and understanding your target customer. So I asked you to consider uh, where do they live, what kind of car do they drive, what are their hobbies and what are their interests, and get really clear about your target audience and who you want to sell your products to. But now you've got that picture, the next question you probably have on your mind is how do you find them and where can you get more of those ideal customers that you just love to have in your showroom? The first question I always ask when I'm thinking about that is, who has the attention of your target customer at the moment? Because clearly, if they're not shopping with you, then they must be shopping somewhere else. And the reason you want to know who has the attention of your existing customers is so that you can focus all of your marketing messages and your sales messages directly to that audience where they actually are. And of course, as a retailer, you have a busy schedule. It's going to save you a lot of time if you do it this way. So here's a few questions you could ask yourself about the audience that you're trying to attract. So firstly, you can ask yourself, where is your target audience most likely to be shopping at the moment. Number two, which social media platforms do they frequent the most? Third, what kind of entertainment do they enjoy? Number four, which trade shows do they visit? Number five, which lifestyle magazines do they read? Number six, do they subscribe to any YouTube channels? Seven, what are their interests and hobbies? Number eight, which community groups do they belong to? Number nine, what sports events do they love to attend? And number 10, what TV programs are they watching? So if you're still not sure who has the attention of your target audience once you've done this exercise, then ask the people who come into your showroom. Almost every day people come into independent retailers showrooms who don't actually buy from them for one reason or another and they're the ideal people that you can ask where they shop and where they buy your kind of products so be brave uh, tell your customers in the shop that you're doing a bit of market research and would they mind answering a few questions you could ask them things like where do they normally shop what kind of products do they buy where do they buy those products normally what magazines are they reading and what kind of research do they do before they actually buy these products do they go on websites social media all of these kind of questions which needn't take more than just a few minutes and you could even offer them a a free gift if they uh, agree to participate in your little market research so remember when you're asking yourself the question who has the attention of my ideal customer it's not just about where they're shopping, but also where they're looking. So what social media platforms are on, which websites are they looking on, and all of that is gonna help you to craft your message and focus that message in the place where you're gonna get the best results from that message. So for example, in my case, I found that most of my independent retailers attend trade shows in the UK, and that's why I travel all around the country so that I can get my message out to that audience because that's where they are most likely to be. And I found it to be very effective. It's not the only place that I can focus my energy. I can focus my energy, for example, on this video and target it to retailers around the country on various social media platforms. But it's important to get really clear about who has the attention of your target audience and then engage with them. Another thing that you could do is to go on a Twitter uh, site or Facebook or LinkedIn and start engaging in conversations uh, with people on those sites and just have a chat and see what's happening there and where your audience is actually spending their time and start creating a relationship with them because that's really what it's all about. It's about gaining trust with your customers because before you can start selling to them, you need to gain their trust and develop a relationship with them. So once you've established where your target audience spends most of their time, it's time to start interacting with them. Now there's many platforms that you may find them. For example, they might watch certain TV programs and magazines. That can be a really expensive way to get your message out there. So for the moment, I'm just gonna leave that to the side. It may work for you, but let's just leave that to the side for the moment and look at other 
avenues of where your target customer spends most of the time. So on social media, you need to get really specific. Is it Twitter? Is it Facebook? Is it LinkedIn? Wherever they may find themselves, that's where you need to focus your energy. Now don't forget, there are also other great places where you can get your message out, and that's in the community. What local community events do they attend? It might be a local cookware event, it could be a fashion expo. And if your products lend themselves to that kind of event, then go and speak to the organizers and go and uh, share your expertise with them and start talking to that audience. It's wherever the audience is, that's the main thing. And it's the principles behind what you're gonna be saying and how you're gonna say it that are key to getting your message out there and attracting the target audience onto your database, which is what we're gonna talk about later. So let's say you've established that your target audience spends most of their time on Facebook. So what's the first thing you're gonna do? You wanna try and attract their attention. Now the biggest mistake that 90% of retailers do is that they post all their great products on social media, they promote sales promotions, they may even have a video of the inside of the shop to show people what a lovely showroom they have. This is the biggest mistake that you can ever make. So I'm gonna ask you to not do that and if you're doing it already, just stop doing that because it's highly unlikely that it's working for you. And the reason for that is that before your potential customers are gonna do business with you, you need to develop an element of trust between you and them so they can get to know you, know something about you, are you any good, are you good at what you do? All of those things are absolutely critical. Now the best analogy that I can share with you to help illustrate this problem is imagine a young man who sees a young girl, he's attracted to her, he really likes her. What's the first thing he's gonna do? Well, he's highly unlikely gonna go up and ask her to marry him. It's just not gonna happen, is it? Firstly, he will maybe start to chat to her, get to know a little bit about her, ask her about her hobbies, what are her likes and her dislikes, and they start developing a bit of a relationship. She starts to like him, starts to trust him. He may ask her out on a date. If that goes well, they'll have a few more dates. And then who knows, maybe after a while, they get married. Now, that time span will be different from business to business, but I think you're getting the principle behind it. Now, in my case, it was a lot quicker than that because after only two weeks of dating my wife, I proposed to her. So some of you might think that's a bit quick, but thankfully we've been happily married for the last 26 years. So resist the temptation to try and sell your products on social media, it's a bad idea. Instead, try and engage in conversation with them. And you can do this in a number of ways. You can maybe share some tips or insights about your industry or the products that they're most likely to buy. You can talk to them about the pitfalls and the mistakes that they need to avoid when buying your kind of products. So they start developing this kind of relationship with you and post these videos or blogs regularly. I would recommend once a week, but if you could do once a month, that's okay. But it's that consistency that is so important because that's the way that you develop trust. Don't post something uh, in the flurry in the next couple of weeks and then do nothing for six months. It's really important to maintain that consistency uh, with your audience. So your main goal, your main purpose in engaging with your audience on whether it be social media or at local community events or wherever it might be, is to invite them to join or subscribe to your mailing list. And this is critical, this is absolutely critical. Your database is your business. That's where your revenue will come from or your extra revenue is gonna come from. So we need to try and encourage them to join your databases. And there's a number of ways you can do that. You can offer them a free gift or perhaps you have a report that they could download from you in exchange for your email address. Their email address, sorry. And once you've got that email address, that's where you upsell. Uh, you can maybe offer them a, uh, a low value product, maybe invite them to the store with a discount voucher or whatever it might be. And that's the main purpose of engaging with your target audience is to get them to come down onto your mailing list. That's critical. So in summary, there are three things to remember. Number one, who has the attention of your target customer? Number two, you need to build trust and credibility with them before they're gonna buy from you. And number three, you need to do everything that you can to invite your audience to subscribe to your mailing list. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the chat that we've had today. 
If you've liked what you've seen, then please subscribe to uh, my YouTube video so that you make sure that you can get all the latest updates. If you have any questions or any comments, please leave them in the comment box below. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. If you want to get in touch with me, give me a call or send me an email and I'll do all that I can to help grow your business. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you next time.